So here's your review for the test coming up on literal equations, solving for each variable. And this one for number one, uh, solving for r means that we need to look on this side with r is n and t, both connected by multiplication. So to undo multiplication, we need to divide by n and t. When we do the one side, you do to the other. That's what cancels those out, and you get the answer of PV. So you have PV over n t is equal to r. You have r by itself, you are done. Number two, it's another simple one-step guy. In this case, x is combined with 6 on this side by addition and subtraction, so you need to do the inverse. So instead of subtracting 6, you add 6 to both sides. y plus 6 is what will equal x. You have x by itself. That means you're done. Number three, <clears throat> a is connected with x, so you're going to have to divide by x, but you can't do that yet until that's the only term on this side. The other part on the left-hand side here is the by. We need to get rid of by first subtracting by because by is connected to ax with addition. So when you do that, you're left with ax equals c minus by. Now you have just the one term, x is connected with a just by multiplication. So to get a by itself, you need to divide both sides by x. So you have now just a equals c minus by over x, nothing that you can simplify there. In number four, very similar way this one is set up. <clears throat> you have to solve for y. So we need this term by itself first, which means I need to get rid of the 7x first. It's positive 7x, that's why you're subtracting 7x from both sides. Don't forget you still have the negative with the 4y when you have 21 minus 7x. And now what you can do is now because it's multiplication, divide both sides by that negative 4, and that'll give you your answer. y equals 21 minus 7x over negative 4. If you could divide all these numbers by the same thing, you can do that to simplify. In this case, there's not much you're going to be able to do. In number five, also number six, you have a big fraction on the right-hand side where you have something in the numerator that you need to get by itself. The way you get rid of this denominator is division, you're dividing by two, so you need to multiply both sides by two. So a times two gives you two a. On the right-hand side, the twos cancel out. You have just b plus c, and now you have something like problem number two. To get c by itself, I'm going to subtract b from both sides. 2a minus b gives you c. c by itself. That's how you know you're done. Same thing here. In this case, it's an n on the bottom, so I need to multiply both sides by n. p times n or n times p, no difference there, equals r minus c. To get c by itself, I need to move the r out of this side. Well, it's a positive r, so I'm going to subtract r from both sides. And I'm going to get, I'm going to write it over here, pn minus r, I can't combine those at all, equals, again, don't forget it's a negative c. So to get c by itself, you would need to divide by negative 1. The way you do that, you can literally write it as over negative 1, or just change the sign for each thing on the other side. So I can divide each of those by negative 1. The difference between 5 and 6 versus 7 and 8 here, 5 has the entire fraction all as 1 <clears throat> on the right-hand side. In number 7, only part of the right-hand side has a fraction. You can't multiply by the 2, or in this case, the number 7 by 3, until you make that the only thing. The fraction has to be the only thing remaining on the right-hand side. So what we're going to do is I first need to get this 7 out of here. So first, we're going to subtract both sides by 7. Gives you y minus 7 equals x over 3. Now this looks like number 5, where you have just the fraction. Now you can multiply both sides by 3. When you multiply this side by 3, make sure you multiply the entire thing by 3. So you're going to be left with x. Well, x is on the right-hand side, technically. It doesn't matter. But let's get that correct. You have x on the right, because those canceled. You have 3 times y minus 7. You can leave it just like that, or if you distribute through, 3y minus 21. Both of those are correct answers. Same idea with number 8. I need to first subtract the n over to get it away from the fraction. So you have m plus 3 minus n equals, you still have this negative p over 5. You have to multiply both sides now by 5. And because of the negative, actually you can multiply both sides by negative 5 to make that work. So that means your answer will be p equals negative 5 times this quantity. I'm just going to distribute through in one step. So negative 5m minus 15 and plus 5n. The last kind that you'll see are where the variable you're solving for is in a denominator. <clears throat> I'm going to look at number 10 actually first. 
you have two fractions equal to each other, I'm just going to cross multiply. That's the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to get x times y equals 3 times z. And now it's really simple to get y by itself. You just need to divide by the x because it's combined by multiplication. So you'll have y equals 3z over x, just like that. In number 9, you don't have a denominator on the left-hand side, so you just need to create one. It's just a, you can think of it as a over 1. So when you cross multiply, you have 6L times A equals R times 1. And then to get L by itself, just like in number 1, you need to divide by a 6 and an A. So your answer is going to be, when those cancel out, L will equal uh, R divided by 6A. Keep thinking your inverse operations, what you need to do to get the variable by itself, and you'll be just fine.